things they hate into Room 101 Forever. Room 101, of course, is uh, taken from uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm-hmm. Room of all your fears and terrors. and so. Uh, is there a copyright issue here? Can we uh, steal this idea? Well, yeah. Uh, well, let's play Room 102. Clever. This is the room next door to Room 101, which is worse, in my opinion. Is it? Oh, Winston Smith. He, he'd love to be in Room 101 if he went to Room 101. He'd go, oh, get me back to Room I didn't know. I didn't know where... Oh, I, I didn't know I was born. This is much worse. So, Carl, these are things that really annoy you. Don't put in things like, you know, cancer and racism. I mean, that goes without They're saying. They're there. They're already in there. All the terrible things in in life here. This is just your little bugbears. The things that really annoy you that, you know. Well, I, I actually did the real show, and I put in things like um, lateness. That's my bugbear. I can't. I can't stand it. I think I put in um, uh, oh parents who let their kids run riot. Parents who think that everyone is interested in their kid as much as they are. Um, I remember I was talking about um, this this family. Right, they were they were passing the baby around in a restaurant, and it was like being sick, and they were all shouting about. It. And I was like, oh, and uh, um, and I, I got onto oh yeah, they were breastfeeding it, and at one point I I, I went on a um, uh, this sort of like digression about a friend of mine who moved to the country and um, the woman next door sort of this hippie woman next door about 40 you know the one those sort of like long well, grey hair you know what I mean know, yeah. shave your legs and yeah. stop wearing flip flops yeah. um, and uh, they said oh we're just neighbours and we bought you a round of rice pudding and they gave my friend a rice pudding and uh, she went oh it's um, it's made from breast milk because I'm, I'm still lactating and I went Thanks very much. And of course, they she went and they threw it away and washed the dish and gave it back to her. And it annoyed me the arrogance of coming round and saying, uh, "It's uh, rice pudding made my breast milk." The ar- uh, get out of here, yeah. you dirty hippie. <laughs> Is what? that what you'd have said though if she'd arrived? At no, your I'd have said, "Oh, do you know what? I um, I'm I'm breast milk intolerant." Uh, uh, no. Uh, well, I remember um, the next day it went out on television. A journalist said, "Oh, Ricky Gervais uh, showed uh, his uh, misogynist side." No, no, I stand by it. I stand by it. I don't eat strangers' breast milk. <laughs> I said about it totally natural. Well, it's not na- okay. Uh, 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 yeah, I a cum sandwich. It doesn't matter if it's natural. It's fucking disgusting. Don't make me a rice pudding out of breast milk. You know, I'm, I'm not a fussy eater. Sure. Well, you are. Yeah. But no, I know what you mean. You, you, surely you'd draw the line there of a stranger's breast milk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Any kind of jizz clan. Jizz clan, do you know what I mean? Mm. That's giving you an example of the sort of thing that one might put into room 102. Yeah. That, uh, people who try and make you eat their breast milk disguised as rice pudding. It's quite a specific fear. Yeah. That one. Uh. Graham. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> he doesn't deserve yeah. that. Uh. Slugs was in there. Slugs. So um, then then, then there's uh, you have to put a case forward, and me and Steve decide whether slugs go in or whether they they stay out, whether they got a purpose. Why? It's, it's just because I'm having a problem with slugs at the moment. There's a lot of slugs coming in the house. Why? I don't know. I just they can get where like water can't. You know what I mean? Because they, they're boneless, aren't they? So well, I need a little gap. So is water boneless? There's not many bones in water. No, no, that's what I said. Yeah, but you're saying they can get somewhere the water can't. Yeah, I know, they're even more likely to, because they sort of move about and that, and they're looking for light. Water's just happy where it is. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Why why banish them all to room 102, slugs? Because they're harmless, aren't they? Yeah, but I also think, I mean, at the end of the day, they're happy wherever. So stick them in room 102, they're not bothering me, and they're happy. They're not bothering well, no, what the room no, is. no, 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 this is a metaphor. Room 102 means they disappear from existence. It's not really a room where you put in slugs with people making rice pudding out of their breast milk. It's not really... It, 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 no. It's not a... You can't rent that room. We're saying, would you take slugs out of existence? That's that's quite a tough call, isn't it? Because everyone's going to have a go. But I don't know what they do. All I know is, they're clogging up my piping. I had to go out and buy a plunger. I haven't seen them since, like, comics when I was a kid. And I suddenly thought, I need one of them things that I always saw in comics. I, I never thought I'd need one of them in my life. 2008. I've got slugs in my pipes. 
<laughs> so I went out, three quid it was. I have no idea what the going rate is for a plunger. Where did you go and get one? Where did you... It's a hardware shop around the corner. Uh, so I went round there, said, have you got a plunger? He said, what size do you want? I said, what size have you got? He said, oh, we've got three different sizes. I said, oh, I have the middle one. So that was three quid. And uh, took it back, gave it, and I think it was slugs. Like, all, like, bits of black stuff came up. I think it was slugs in there, like what, broken up what, slugs. Well, ha- hang on, hang on, hang on. It could have just be black gunk, couldn't no, it? No, no, it looked very sluggish. Because <laughs> remember, I've had a problem with them anyway. I'll go to the toilet or whatever, look round, there's a slug climbing up the wall out of the shower basin thing. Are you sure it's a slug? Yeah, definitely, definitely slugs. I have to keep chucking them out because I don't like killing anything. Right. I, I didn't want to kill the slugs with slug pellets. I bought some copper ribbon. Right, they don't like going over that. They don't they? like that. They, they get, get a little, little shock charge, off yeah. But... Now that should be a warning, but instead they're diverting. They've done a diversion. They've gone up the wall and across. <laughs> now it's like that's a warning. That's like having a no trespassing sign, yeah. and they're just going bollocks to that, <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting in, and it's annoying me. And now you get to a point when you do say, "Well, if they carry on like this, I'll have to kill them because they're not how, how much." How they're much, not playing by the rules. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what the purpose is. You just sit there still. I don't see him doing anything. I was lo- looking at one close up. But well, what do you want to do? Be line reading Rusa. What do you want a slug to do? In the same way you see a bee collecting pollen, good, it's doing its little work. But they're dead. It's carrying big leaves or whatever. But the slugs just sat in the They're all doing the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. That slug is out. It's eating. That it's is finding not, food. There's no food. There's no food in our kitchen for a slug. Believe me. There's not enough there for me sometimes. <laughs> but never mind a slug. It's, there's nothing for it. Definitely not in the shower. What's he doing? <laughs> so, I told you ages ago about how the, they cause more problems than good. They eat, they eat cabbage. Right. Um, when they shouldn't be. Um, they get in letterboxes and nick stamps. They don't nick stamps. They eat the stamps. They like the glue on it. Right. Right. Is this a big problem, though? <laughs> is there an epidemic of slugs eating stamps? But I think it is, and that's why they're so slow. I think they're sweating glue. Right? They sweating they're them. eating all them, and 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 that's <laughs> that's why they're sticking to stuff. Have you ever picked up a slug? Well sticky. They give off this glue. It's like the, all the glue they've eaten off stamps. They panic, and when they sweat, they sweat glue. Sweat? <laughs> Think of a slug. A slug. <laughs> what do you mean they sweat glue? If you're making up nature. You're, if this you, is like Attenborough, but like, made up. If you, when you see a slug, yeah, you prod it, it gets nervous, it wants to run off. But the problem is, because it's sweating glue, it's it, not sweating glue. It makes sense. That is not. It's just a nonsense theory. It's just what I've noticed on it. Right, Rick, do you allow slugs in room one hundred two? Well, I just want. I think we should, you know, you know, if, if they're going to be gone forever, then we should, we should put a case forward. They're amazing creatures. If you haven't got them in your house, it'd be different. Oh, you've got these people coming around saying you want some rice pudding. That isn't a real problem. <laughs> that wasn't me. Oh, right, right. Whatever it was. Um, no, but they're they're amazing. They've got two sets of like antennae. The one at the top is for light, and the next one is that they can they can smell and get food in the air, just the slightest. What do they do for the world? Their food. If if only it's not good enough. That not good enough. What do you mean? But like that's well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Surely them being food for Who's somebody. Who's eating them? Hedgehogs. Do they like them? Yeah, they love them. They're, yeah, they love slugs. Do they? Yeah. The thing is, though, if you're always going to upset someone, aren't you? With anything I put in room. Well, no, you just got to make a reasoned case, and I'm not sure that you've you've, you've argued well enough. I'm just slugs. having problems with them at the moment. I've spent three quid on a plunger. And I don't like the idea that every time I get up in the night to go into the toilet or whatever, I've got to put the light on because I might have a bit of sluggage between my toes. Sluggage? <laughs> a little bit of sluggage between my toes? But I mean, you if you're going to put everything in, in your house that causes problems, we're gonna, what else are we going to have here? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not. It's just, I mean, at the end of the day, you only moan about what's fresh on your mind at the moment. And I haven't, you know, I've got to go to that house and I dread to think what's, how many slugs are going to be stuck to the ceiling and everything. Right, okay, so we need to move on. So, you are not putting them in? I'm not putting slugs in. All right, slugs have not gone in, Carl, I'm afraid. What's your next one? Okay, number two. Um, People who don't want to do what what the brains would be better at doing. Right, okay, now I'll get around that sentence. Now, tell me again. Brains that don't 
want to do what their owners are good at. Ah, so now it's the brain's fault. Before you said you were going to put people in who don't do what their brain's good at, but now you've changed that. Now you're putting the, the blame on the brain. Now you want to put in brains who don't want to do what their owners are good at. I like the fact that you own a brain. Okay, now then, I just need a bit more clarification, Rick. Before you ask questions, can you just expand on that point, please, KP? Do you know, like... Pe people decide what they want to do. Right. Don't they? For a living. Mm hmm But sometimes they're not good enough. Right. You mean they have a dream and they can't fulfil it because they haven't got the, the, the skill or... Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. No. It's just that they haven't unlocked the thing that they're good at. Right. But, which is fair enough. You can't always find what's going on. There's a lot going on in the brain. Yeah. You know, there might be something up there that you, you just never find, which is sad. Right. Right. But you mean you may never discover your full potential because you may never st never stumble across it. You may never have the means. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. But that that yeah, of course. Yeah. I I only got into hospital radio because my dad was in hospital, so I found out about this thing and I thought I didn't even know this existed. I want to go. Well, of course. So but, I mean, so it's, that's a, there's much bigger issues there that um, uh, the poor working class people don't get the same opportunities. Um, uh, people in the third world, when, when you're worrying about whether you're going to live through the next few days, you don't start thinking, I wonder if I can play the cello. Can I so, refer you back though, Rick? You made an interesting point there, but I fear that's not exactly what Carl was saying. I don't on. think that his point was quite yeah, that profound. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I don't know. There was something to do with the brain not allowing its owner. Yeah, because that's the bit that annoys me. Fair enough if a brain hasn't decided what it wants to do. Cause you what is this? Let it, let it oh, finish. God, this is about finish. the brain Shut up. Cause being in charge like the numbskulls. Because it, it. it hasn't found its destiny type thing. Brain but is when someone is good at something and they know the brain is good at something, but then they don't want to do it and they want to go off and do something else. So who's to blame here, the person or the brain? I'm talking okay, like him now. I know what Wh who are you putting into room 102? What annoys you? A brain that doesn't let its owner know what it's good at, or an owner that won't do what the brain wants to I do? I think it's the owner because say like a bloke who's good at plumbing. Yeah. His brain loves plum plumbing. His <laughs> brain loves plumbing. <laughs> Um, so he goes off to try and, uh... And plan. No, uh, he's, he's gonna do something else. He's gonna he's, do something else. He's carpentry. Now, they say in this country, the problem is we haven't got enough tradesmen. Right. We don't have enough plumbers. Right. There's enough plumbers' brains. I don't know what the fuck that means. Shut up. Let what him are you please, talking about? Up. Let him please finish. Because this brains, is like, this is like brains and pillows Brains again. have not changed over the years. The brain is exactly the same. But it's the owner of the brain that's in charge. The brain could be going... I want to go for a walk, or I want to go and find something out. But if your body's too lazy to get up and go and see the stuff, the brain isn't going to get what it wants. It doesn't make what sense, Carl. Right, you are your is, brain. Okay, me... you could have a good point if you said this. You could say that everyone's brain has the ability to become a plumber. Yeah. Uh, you know, your brain, you know, ah, yeah. But I don't know if it has, you see, because this is the thing. When I was younger, when I first left school, I had two jobs I wanted to do. I wanted to be a joiner, right? Uh, or a car mechanic. I had a go at sort of joinery. Uh, couldn't really get my head around it. Right? Did work placement at a garage. Messed it up, got kicked out. What did you now, do? Now the thing is... Why did you get kicked out? Just because I messed the garage up. What, how did you mess it up? Uh, the fella was a... He's a bit moody, this fella. And he was, uh... He just decorated his garage. And you are like that. the slug in this scenario, aren't you? He just... Do you know how I like to paint the floor and everything? Mm. Make it with lines in it and everything like that. Right. What did you do? And it was... He painted it white. You shouldn't have white in a garage. Stupid with all the oil about and that. It's not the right colour, is it? It's like getting a white sofa, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. So, he'd painted it all. And then, uh... He sort of said, Do you want to, uh, change the oil on the car? So, yeah, go on then. Uh, so what do I do? He said, you pull a sump out, stick a bucket underneath, catch the oil. Alright then. Go down there, pull a the sump out, hold the bucket, but because of the pressure, the oil doesn't come straight out, it floats out sideways. Went all over his white floor, he went mental, kicked me out. Now the thing is, that wasn't really my fault, my brain didn't know. It was showing an interest. Right, what? Right, let okay. him finish! Oh God, what does he mean? Shut up, let the my brain, fault and my please, brain. The please brain was showing up. an interest, but at the end of the day, if it hasn't got the knowledge, what can it do? Now, you could say, was that my fault or my brain's fault? No, I'd never say that. People may be in the wrong job, but well, you, you might not discover what you're really doing. Yeah, but I'm talking at. about, you get people, all right, let's go to the extreme. People with no legs who want to be swimmers. Don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! 
Oh, God. It's so annoying. Oh. Is this a big problem? It's, it's madness, isn't it? It's mad that the brain wants to do that so much. The brain's in the wrong in the wrong body almost. Yeah. Are you with me? No. no. A plumber, a plumber, a plumber who can plumb is annoying when he jacks it in as a living because there's other brains who can't do plumbing. They don't get their head round it. Means. Look, you, you must have learned the same stuff at school as me, but a lot of it wasn't interesting to my brain. I wasn't bothered. It wasn't into taking it in. Yet look at me in like editing and all that. I can use all that equipment because my brain's, my brain's happy with it. Yeah, you found something you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. But why aren't I good at plumbing or joinery or being a mechanic? Because you're probably not interested in it. I was, I loved it as but a people kid. People don't do have different brains, people are different. Some oh. people are more higher logic, low yeah, emotion. That's, that's you what know? I'm saying. Yeah, but you, I don't know what you're putting in room 102, because you're saying these, it's like this brain's wandering around. Who's the brain? body and it goes, oh, I'll choose that body, hang on, this body doesn't even want to do some plumbing. It's, it's a matter of taste, it's just a matter of taste. It's good to do what you're good at and stop chasing a dream. <laughs> this is the most complicated thing. You that could is. just put in noisy kids, like Ricky. Why is this? This, this is a brain that because someone work. else would have done noisy kids. There's no point everyone putting in the same thing. But I don't brain. even know what your point is here. What, I, what, for example, what I put in were parents who ignore their ignore their kids running riot in a restaurant or on a train. Mm. The arrogance of them thinking that oh, aren't, isn't it funny that there was someone to blame? I was basically putting in bad parenting, or you know, there was someone I wasn't going. A brain who wanted to be a plumber, but the not, plumber didn't. I'm not putting the brain in, it's just people... Um, if I had a really good skill, I'd hope that, that I'd use it. Okay, if I, it's you like, don't know what you're good at until you, until you try it. Uh, you might be the best drummer in the world. I know, but they're the people I'm having a go at. They're the people who I'm having a go at. The people who know they can do something, but they don't do so it. So people who don't fulfil their own potential. That's a, that's a good one. Is that a better point? Yeah, that's what I meant. But there's nothing to do with this duality, this brain, brain versus person. I don't know what that is. It's a weird thing you've got, a really weird little kink you've got, that you think this brain is another entity that lives in your head, that you own it, and you've got to become the master of it. <laughs> like some sort of weird dog. Uh, Who am I talking to now, Carl or his brain? We're both listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put in uh, people who don't fulfil their full potential. Slugs are safe, but people who don't fulfil their full potential, you have got into room 102. Got a couple more things for room 102, Carl? My, you know my problem with me restless leg syndrome. Oh yeah. If I could put that in. Right, okay. What is this problem? The problem I've got with my legs how they sort of come alive at night. <laughs> <laughs> and what Tap are they out doing? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah. I sort of go to bed, I'm tired, and then uh, I sort of nod off for about 40-odd 40, 40 minutes. Yeah. And then my legs go. Right. And they just... I can't sleep. It's really depressing. I think it's actually affecting me, sort of, health-wise, because I'm not sleeping right through the night. So like, I want to And what does Graham me. say? What does, um... Suzanne saying? Uh, well, she's annoyed with it, she's just getting loads of bruises. Mm. Kicking her. I did a little bit of research on restless leg syndrome when he um, mentioned it to me. Uh, and uh, two little bits of information you'd be interested in, Steve. Uh, it is exacerbated and made worse by a sedentary lifestyle, right. lack of activity, lack of exercise, and it can be alleviated with um, the opposite of that exercise, um, leading a, um, a more active lifestyle, which I, I proves walk. my point. No, You're no. like a slug. I do loads of walking and I make sure I do a good walk. If anything, it's because I walk too fast because I tense my legs. So I didn't say anything to do with that when I told him about ages ago. He said it was because I was eating ice cream. I don't, well, I don't know what that means. Well, I don't know something that's is. in ice cream. He just is this the same doctor that said your nerves are too long? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a different fella. This right. is the proper doctor. But, right. um... But yes, I've cut that out, and it works for a bit, but now it's got to a point where I have to go to bed, and I have my legs outside of the bed. I have to put my feet on the floor. What, what? do you mean? What? I have to lie in the bed, like With normal feet position, on the floor. I have to stick my legs out and feet on the floor. That's insane, you can't <laughs> sleep like that. Well, I do, I nod off, and then maybe in the night, when I wake up, my legs are back in the bed, so either they get bored, or they... Or they... <laughs> 
<laughs> uncomfy or whatever. Yeah. Or they eventually get tired. But it's kind of like, if I have them there, it's like they think they're awake and they're being used. The only other thing I can do is if I lie on my front and then have my legs in the air. What well, I've done? Whoa! You lie on the front and have your legs in the air. Like that. Say if that's my head. Oh, like, um, like that. Like a scorpion. Like 